we have previously chosen to introduce the reference signal by feeding it through a feed-forward gain. And we designed this feed-forward gain such that the steady-state error between the plant output and reference input is zero. However, modeling errors and constant disturbances will cause a non-zero steady-state tracking error. Today we look at another way to introduce the reference input that would always result in a zero steady-state tracking error. This technique is called integral control. The compensator structure that we choose for integral control is shown in this block diagram. We omit the observer and assume that the plant states are available for feedback since we previously saw that we can design the state feedback and observer separately and then combine them according to the separation principle. We include the state feedback in the same way as we did previously, but we denote the state feedback gain by Kp to indicate that this is proportional state feedback. For integral control, we introduce the reference input differently than before. We subtract the plant output y from the reference input r and pass the result through an integrator. The output of the integrator is multiplied with the gain ki, where the subscript i means that this is an integral gain. This forms the other component of the plant input u. By adding an integrator, we have added another state to the system. Let's call this integral state z and label the output of the added integrator as minus z. The input of the integrator is then the derivative minus z dot. The idea of integral control can be understood by looking at the definition of the integral state z, which can equivalently be written as this equation. In steady state, the states of the system do not change, which now includes the integral state z. Z would only be constant if the integrand y minus r is zero. If y minus r is zero, then the plant output y would be the same as the reference input r, which means that the plant output tracks the reference input exactly in steady state. With the chosen compensator structure, let's first describe the dynamics of the full system and then discuss how to design the proportional gain and the integral gain. The plant dynamics is described by the state equation and the output equation, which we label equation 1 and equation 2. The dynamics of the integral state is described by this equation, which we read off from the block diagram. By using equation 2, we can rewrite this equation as follows, and we label it as equation 3. The control law that we choose for integral control is read off from the block diagram as u equal to minus kp times x plus ki times minus z. We can rewrite this as a gain times a state vector, the plant state vector, with the integral state added is called the augmented state vector and the combined proportional gain and integral gain is the state feedback for the augmented states. We can now combine the plant, integral state and control law to describe the dynamics of the full system. By combining equations 1 and 4 we can write x dot in terms of x and z. By making use of equation 3, we can write the dynamics of the full system as a state variable system where this is the augmented state vector, this is the derivative of the augmented state vector, the input to the system is given by R, this is the new A matrix, and this is the new B vector. We can now calculate the poles of the full system as the roots of the characteristic equation which is given by the determinant of SI minus the new A matrix equal to zero. We can then calculate this determinant as a polynomial in terms of S, set up the desired characteristic polynomial by specifying the desired collocations and solve for the elements of KP and KI by comparing coefficients. However, 
Since this characteristic polynomial is not written in the same form as that of the regulator developed previously, we cannot make use of the numerical design procedure we used for the regulator design. To allow us to use this procedure, we write SI minus the new A matrix as SI minus this matrix plus this column vector times the full gain vector. If we define this matrix as A bar and this vector as B bar, then we can write the characteristic polynomial of the full system as SI minus A bar plus B bar times K. This characteristic polynomial is now in the same form as that of the regulator developed previously and we can therefore make use of the regulator design procedure to design the gain vector K given the matrices A bar and B bar. To illustrate these concepts, let's look at an example. We use the same hanging pendulum model of previous examples given by this state equation and this output equation. We want to apply integral control to ensure robust steady state tracking and we therefore augment the plant model with an integral state. The augmented system matrices is given by A bar and B bar. In matrix A bar, the top left block is the plant's A matrix, the bottom row contains the plant's C vector and the last column contains only zeros. The vector B bar contains the plant's B vector with the last element being a zero. The augmented system now contains three states and we choose the closed loop poles to be in a Butterworth configuration with a natural frequency of four radians per second. To illustrate how one would use the regulator design procedure to design the gain K, let's look at a few MATLAB commands. This line creates the matrix A bar, this line creates the vector B bar, and this line specifies the desired closed loop poles. We then use MATLAB's Acker function in this line to find the gain K that would place the closed loop poles in the desired locations. The resultant gain vector K is given by this row vector where the first two elements is the proportional feedback Kp and the last element is the integral gain Ki. In conclusion, we can use an integral control system to ensure robust steady state tracking of the reference input by the plant output and we can design this integral control system using the same regulated design procedure developed previously.